<laughs> like, I thought I knew the names of everybody. <laughs> good. All right, I'd like to call the meeting. Uh, this is a joint meeting with the Dunstable Board of Selectmen. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. And uh, rather than, I'm not going to read the uh, full agenda at this point. I want to get straight into the meeting. And then later, uh, we have a, a meeting. We have items in our agenda that we need to cover. Um, I will start, though, I guess, with public comment period. Are there any public comments at this point? OK. Oh, yes. And please uh, step to the mic and you can tell us. Well, because I had it listed on the agenda after this, but that's fine. I thought you were going to do it later, so I wasn't quite ready for you. So, uh, Pertinent to this meeting that you're doing tonight, I just want to say that two weeks from Wednesday, we're going to be having a sustainable Groton uh, seminar on PFAS, all about PFAS. We're going to have speakers from Silent Spring Institute, from uh, Groton Water Department, from uh, Board of Health, from the Groton Select Board, as well as um, uh, Representative uh, Margaret Scarsdale talking about some legislation that's uh, underway on uh, Beacon Hill. So. That's the, that's the 4th of October. I welcome everybody to come to the Groton Center in West Groton. Whether you're in Dunstable or Groton, come, come on by. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Uh, yes? Okay, please do. Call All right, thank you. Yeah. Any other board of committee needs to be yeah. called to order? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Call the Rock Groton Water Commission meeting to order. Very good. Thank you. And Michelle? I'll call the Groton Water Commission meeting to order. Excellent. There's lots of order in the room. And I will call the Dunstable Board of Selectmen meeting to order. Great. Thank you, Ron. All right, so um, we're meeting tonight in joint session with the Dunstable uh, uh, Select Board, and we're going to be discussing the uh, uh, solution to address the PFAS and bring portable drinking water to the Grand Dunstable Regional High School and surrounding properties uh, in Dunstable. So I know um, the last time we met over in Dunstable, there was a, uh, I, I think we, we had a, I think it was a good conversation. A lot of uh, stuff was there, got out on the table, and um, I think we, at that point, decided the best way forward was to sort of create a, a working group and to allow that group to sort of put their heads together around a lot of what they heard that night, plus the additional information that they had previously. This is certainly an issue that we've been grappling with. It's not, you know, brand new and everything. Uh, and so those groups have met, and I think it'd be probably helpful to, to start off with that. And Brian, do you have any thoughts, sir? No, I agree. I think yeah. that, uh, you know they worked. They had a couple of meetings and some long discussions, and uh, I think we're ready to get to an understanding here as to um, how to proceed and path with our path forward here. Great. All right, uh, Mark, do you want to yeah, uh, so I'll, make I'll, a presentation? I'll start so off. We, we did have a, uh, the town <coughs> manager, town administrator, working group made up of Jason and, and myself. Allison Manugian from the Broughton Select Board, Leah Bespanis from the uh, Dunstable Select Board. We also had Tom Orcutt and Paul Brinkman and John O'Brien uh, from the Dunstable Water Commission join us as well. We did have two meetings. We also had a conference call with the DEP to talk about potential solutions. Um, and then we came up with a recommendation that we want to make to you this evening. So I'm going to turn it over to Tyler Schmidt, who is our engineer from uh, Environmental Partners. He's going to walk you through a PowerPoint presentation that brings us to where we uh, are tonight, and hopefully we'll come to some sort of decision tonight. Thank you. Yeah, Tyler. All right. So just to give everybody a little background, uh, in 2022, the Groton Dunstable Regional High School sampled for PFAS in the school as well, and the results came in well above the MCL for PFAS six. Uh, MassDP determined the cause of the contamination was the 2003 fire and the athletic field uh, that was extinguished via aqueous film, film forming foam, AFFF, which is a very known, very well known PFOS contributor. MassDEP also sampled sites around the private wells of the Groton Dunstable Regional High School and found several that had high levels of PFOS 6. MassDEP has since notified the school district that they are responsible for the PFOS contamination and must provide a solution to all impacted residents. Uh, the project objectives, uh, so representatives from the, school, from the school district, the towns of Dunstable, Broaden, and Pepperell all met several times to evaluate the feasible options. Uh, with the primary goal of providing clean, less than four part per trillion water to the Groton Dunstable Regional High School and the private wells as quickly as possible. The secondary goal was to improve the water systems of the three communities uh, in this area by expanding municipal fire protection, heading off a potential PFAS plume spread, 
and increase the water system resilience by establishing emergency interconnections between the three systems. Uh, so the working group evaluated three primary alternatives. Uh, alternative one was the purple water system extension. Uh, that was broken down into two phases. Phase one is to install a new water main from the intersection of Route 113 Jersey Street to the Groton Dunstable Regional High School uh, and then surrounding properties around there. That would be paid for via Groton Dunstable cost share. Phase two would be to in interconnect with Dunstable via Groton Street and install a booster station for municipal fire protection and that would be paid for by Pepperell. The second alternative was the Groton water system extension uh, and that was to install a new water main up Chicopee Row to the Groton Dunstable Regional High School and to loop around the school to the impacted properties. That would be paid for via Groton Dunstable cost share with a $1 million contribution from the Groton Water Department. And the last option evaluated was the Groton, Dunst the Groton Pepperell Dunstable Regional Water System Plan. Um, and this one basically consisted of phase one being the Groton Water System Extension and phase two being the Pepperell Water System Extension. Phase one would be funded via a cost share between Groton and Dunstable with a $1 million contribution from the Water Department. And phase two would be uh, uh, the, the cost share is still in the negotiation and it's expected to cost around $3 million. Uh, the Pepperell Water System Extension in more detail. Here's a map. You can see the blue is the phase one and the orange is the phase two. Uh, the cost for Groton would be $6.23 million. The cost for Dunstable would be $1.86 million. That represents the, the cost share, the change in the student body of the high school between 77 and 23% split. And then phase two would be by Pepper will be a 10.4 million. The benefits of this, of this uh, extension would be the least costly option if the water does not need to be additionally treated for PFAS. It's a multi-phase project to connect the Groton Dunstable Regional High School more quickly because phase one has simpler permitting. Uh, and there's sufficient hydraulic capacity for normal demands in phase one. The fire demand would, fire protection would not suffice until phase two is completed. Challenges, phase one would provide over four parts per trillion PFOS water until the pepper water treatment plant is built, which is about two to three years out. Uh, it has insufficient hydraulic capacity for fire protection until after a booster station is installed in phase two, which is about three to five years out. Phase two is subject to extensive interbasin transfer and water management act permits. And there's a potential for contamination to spread further into Groton on Chickapoo Road. Next slide. <clears throat> the Groton water system extension, by contrast, will be running with me up from Groton in, into the school. There's only one phase for this project. Uh, Groton, Groton's cost would be the 9.93 million. Dunstables will be the same 1.86 million as the Pepper solution. That's offset by the Groton Water Department's $1 million contribution. Pepperell would still spend $10.4 million under a separate project connecting the two, connecting Dunstable and Pepperell via Route 113, which is this green line up here. The benefits of this system is it's the shortest time frame to implement less than poor part per trillion PFOS water to the school and impact properties. Uh, there is sufficient hydraulic capacity for both normal demand and fire protection along the alignment. And Dunstable's cost matches the Pepperell solution with the allocation from the Groton Water Commission. The challenge is this does not facilitate a southerly interconnection between Pepperell and Dunstable. There's potential for contamination to spread further into Dunstable, and this is subject to Interbasin Transfer Act permitting. Next slide. The regional water system plan, the cost basis is the same as the, the Groton one, except there's an additional $3.1 million phase two cost share that is yet to be negotiated. Um, the benefits are all benefits of the Groton water system extension and the benefits of the Pepper water system extension. And additionally, all three water systems can be interconnected for an emergency water supply connectivity for resiliency. The challenges include this is the highest cost option. There's a need to negotiate the division of the 3.1 million between Pepper, Groton, and Dunstable. And there are permitting risks in phase two that include extensive IT, Inter Basin Transfer Act permitting and water management act permits. Uh, the working group has decided to recommend the regional solution. Uh, the main advantages are this enables quick implementation of the Groton Water System extent, Extension to solve the PFAS issues of the school and surrounding properties. It enables a continuous interconnection between Pepperell and Dunstable. 
It includes the water, it, it includes new water infrastructure from all sides to mitigate uh, the spread of PFAS plume. It expands the municipal, municipal fire protection coverage area for all three systems and it, it enhances the resiliency of each water system by establishing a water system emergency interconnections. Disadvantages, this is the highest cost option with the 3.1 million cost share still in the negotiation and phase two is subject to permitting challenges. In terms of implementation of the regional solution, phase one timeline looks like this. So in August of 23, an SRF application was filed in Groton for the Groton Water System extension of $12.8 million. In October through November, there's a Groton will have a fall town meeting and special election that needs to approve a, a proposition two and a half override for the borrow fund. In January 2024, the SRF intended use plan will be released by DEP, informing us that the town got funding. In June 2024, uh, construction of the Groton water system expansion will be in. In October, the earliest is the water service to be provided to the Groton Dunstable Regional High School. By June is the earliest the water service to be provided to the rest of the impacted properties. Property. And by September 2025 is the earliest phase one project can conclude. Next slide. Phase two, the implementation timeline is a little bit more shaky because it's very subject to permitting. September 2023, at this meeting, Groton and Dunstable Select Boards was agreed to pursue the solution. Between September and December, the 3.1 million in funding will be further negotiated with the intermunicipal agreement between Groton and Dunstable. In 2024 through 2025, Pepperell and Dunstable will move forward with their Water Management Act and Interbasin Transfer Permitting. By August 2025, Pepperell will submit an SRF application for the funding of the Phase Two project as the environmental justice community. Fall 2025, Groton, Dunstable, and Pepperell Fall Town meetings will, will appropriate additional borrowed funds as necessary. Uh, spring 2026, phase two construction will begin with a tentative conclusion date of fall 2027. Next slide. Conclusion. The regional solution is the only option that solves all three, water, all three communities' primary and secondary goals. Rod and Dunstable needs to sign a legal services intermunicipal agreement to continue negotiations. Implementation timelines are subject to approval from Mass DEP and the Water Resources Commission. And all all solutions are subject to the approval of the proposi proposition two and a half override at the Broughton Fall Town meeting. Any questions? Excellent presentation. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. Um, why don't we start, I guess, with uh, uh, board members. Do we have any questions? Board members? Broughton board or any thoughts or comments? Well, because it wasn't part of the, the working group. Just want to, the rationale for the solution we came up with, with the Phase two, just want to know where that conversation I, I, I came from. I can address that. It, when we met with DEP, one of the things that DEP liked is that all three towns were working together, that there would be an interconnection between the three towns, and that by doing that, it would help with the permitting of the overall solution. There's a couple of things that Groton needs out of it, there's a couple of things that Pepper needs out of it, and there's a couple of things that Dunstable needs out of it. By having all three towns working together in a cohesive, cooperative manner, DEP was very, very happy with that, and they thought that the likelihood of the whole thing getting permitted was, was, was greater. It also, one of the benefits, and I think Tyler talked about that in his presentation, is the interconnection, the emergency interconnection between the three communities. That is also a benefit that we would really, really want to see uh, happen up in that, uh, up in that area. Uh, Tyler, is there anything else you want to add to that? No, I think you've covered it all. I hope that answers your question. It does, yep. What, can I, I ask about the interconnection? Yeah. What and how is that emergency interconnection? How did that come into play? Like what? Like something we saw in Tewksbury where they ran out of water. Or yeah. So emergency interconnections are very useful for systems. Um, you know, not every system has redundant water sources, and so if you ever had an emergency, and by definition, emergency is inherently unexpected, where a water source is shut down for a period of time or unaccessible or can't be used. Um, having interconnections is often sometimes the only way to maintain minimum essential service. So having neighbors that have water systems that are functioning properly with they, they can provide water in those emergencies is very useful um, from a resiliency perspective. And can I follow up with that? That's, that was my question. I was going to ask Mr. Orcutt what, what our emergency plans are now. We have a, a partial connection with Westford. 
um, and we implement it on a yearly basis when we clean our wells. It doesn't supply the entire town, but it's a partial interconnection. Do we, uh, Tom, can we move on to the uh, West Garden Water District, or, or there's one that we We do need? not have one with West Garden, because yeah. it's on the other side of the river, and we've looked at well, that, but... Right. We, yeah, there's, there's provisions for connection made in the Cernan Farms. Correct. Project for Correct. doing that. Okay, thank you. Telling mutually. Ron, any questions? Yeah. Sure, so um, great presentation. Thank you. Um, there was no mention of the debt forgiveness as part of Pepperell. I know Pepperell is a qualified town based on, I don't know the exact description of how they say it, but there's a debt forgiveness opportunity for these projects. Why wasn't that mentioned? It, 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 it was. It, it, it should have been clearer in, in the presentation, Karen. And when you looked at, when, when you went through the presentation, when, when Pepperell uh, applies for their SRF funding on phase two of the project, that includes the three million dollars that adds a lot towards that that gives us the potential for loan forgiveness and for um, uh, interest free loans as well for that part of it so that's why we still need to negotiate how that 3.1 million would work but it is absolutely part of the part of the proposal and it was up there when you saw that Pepple has to apply for the SRF funding in phase two it mentioned, it mentioned environmental justice correct correct, correct. But doesn't like what's the do we know what the number like what yeah. Someone in that field. You know, it's hard to like, give me a Paul, ballpark here. Paul, do you have any? So we, we, can you get that, Paul, for the people that are listening at home? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Thanks. We can hear you fine in the room. I know you can. <laughs> and they can hear me all over the place. <laughs> um, so we just we just built a water treatment plant a, a little bit ago, and I believe it was around 10 percent. But we had a meeting. At least I was on a meeting recently, and there's a lot of other money kicking around now. So there, I've even heard numbers of 20%. Littleton got 20%, and they're not even environmental justice. So um, it really depends on the pool of loans that they're looking at and how much extra money they have kicking around. They don't commit. They won't commit to you up front. Yeah, but having all one of the things that DEP following up on that point that DEP said to us when we had the call with them is by having all three communities together mm -hmm. makes it a much more uh, exciting application. And attractive. Proposal. Attractive, that's what We it also is. heard that earlier. We had reached out to Congresswoman Trahan's office, and we had heard from the, that they clearly are going to be uh, favoring, uh, you know, regional solutions or approaches to Correct. issues like this with PFAS. Mm -hmm. And so, they were very unequivocal about that. So it, it's early, and there's a lot of permitting that has to happen on phase two. Phase one permitting is basically we have to have the uh, interbasin transfer release from the Lost Lake um, area and so that's we think we'd be pretty good there then when we get into the phase two um, permitting that gets a little bit more complicated because there's a lot more water volume and that that will trigger a water water management act and a potential um, environmental impact um, in, 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 in a basin transfer so that could be a little bit more complicated but having all three communities together helps with that with that process and that three million dollars you know, that makes the, the, the Pepo piece um, 13 million total. The, the, the Pepo's given 10 million, we're giving 3 million towards mm -hmm. it. But that 13 million could benefit from having the environmental justice piece, loan forgiveness, and if you get 20% forgiveness, as, as Paul just said, that makes that 3 million much less for the, for the, for the two communities to participate in. Could mm -hmm. you put the slide back up that puts the regional water system plan? Absolutely. I'm probably going to have to stop from the beginning because I don't know how to do this, Leah, so I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the beginning. You tell me which slide to uh, stop at. One more. One more. There you go. Just, just so people can see. Do you have a question? <laughs> that was my question for now. She wants to have an answer so people can see it. <laughs> I got what you were saying. So, so I have a couple of issues, a couple of questions. When we run the numbers, okay, and, and, and we come to that amount, Mark, how are the legal fees being handled for? Are they provided for in that number? Well, right now, the way the legal fees would work, and if the, the Dunstable Select Board votes to support the intermunicipal agreement, the school committee, the Groton Dunstable Regional School Committee, has to support that as well. And then the way Brian can represent us is Brian will actually bill his time to the Groton Dunstable Regional School District, and then I'll have to work out something with Laura and Jason to figure out how we get the money to pay the bill. But that's the way it would work, and we'd split it three ways. So I'm gonna 
be of the understanding that those numbers don't include the legal fees. Correct. And I don't see the legal fees in terms of negotiating the um, how we divide this up and how we have the intermunicipal final intermunicipal agreement. I'm hoping if these two boards tonight vote to support the regional approach, I think the negotiation is going to be very simple. Jason, I don't know if you want to comment on that, but I don't see it costing a lot of money in legal fees. No, I mean, I think the legal fees are going to be there no matter what project we select. We're going to have to pay them. So, But when we left and we had a discussion early on with this, that, that the district was going to not participate in any of the management decisions or any of the in-work, they were simply going to be the benefit they're going to get the and so that I think that leaves and that's why I'm asking. No, no, it's a, it's a, it's a good question. Yep. I'm going to guess that Myrick's legal fees could could easily be 15k. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, but it's it's Myrick doing the work for us. Yep. And he already knows what's going on. He already knows both communities. Mm -hmm. And if it's just negotiating an intermunicipal agreement that says that Groton is going to pay 77 percent plus a million dollars and Dunstable is going to pay whatever that remaining amount is for the for the process, it's a very simple intermunicipal agreement. I don't see it costing a lot in legal fees. That extra three million, we have to we have to work that out. But I'm not that concerned about that. Okay, and that brings to the next question, which is how do we resolve the ambiguity of that 3.1 million? Is that a solid number, and how do we get that to a point where it now becomes a number that we can act on? What's 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 the what's the rationale for that? Phase two. The so, so one million. The phase two. Yeah, in terms to get that number more aggressive, um, we'd have to. We need we need more clarity on the permitting side because if we realize that uh, that the state is going to hold up the permits for phase two for multiple years, every year they hold it up beyond we assume is going to be more inflation and the cost of construction is going to be higher. So once we get a more clarified time as to what the state's gonna, gonna want from the interbasin transfer side and from the water management act side, then we'll be able to know what construction year we're really working in. And um, quite frankly, as we keep getting further away from this COVID time where, where inflation just has kind of been blowing up across the board, the industry will begin to stabilize a little bit more and we can put less contingency that we've been doing you know, on our construction estimates because every, every bid you see, um, it just keeps going up and up to an almost unsustainable point, which will, since COVID has concluded and inflation begins to come down, that's beginning to normalize. And so, with because I haven't seen the numbers, right? And I do understand numbers really well. I'm cutting cover and all that kind of um, <laughs> When you look at those that are up there right now, what's in that number for contingency fee? Uh, contingency, we have 20% right now. Yeah. Um, but I just want to clarify that the 3.1 million we're referring to, so everything in blue is funded through phase one and that's already been divided up. This orange piece over here is Pepperell's piece. So we're really only referring to this section of pipe right here. So that 3.1 million reflects only here and that's all we'd be looking at for the phase two cost share between Grant and Dunstable. Uh, Pepple, the 10.4 million that Pepperell has already appropriated takes the biggest portion of that line. But more to the point, Ron, I think your question is whether or not the cost is 3 million, 5 million, 7 million, how the heck are we going to come to the on what the cost share is? Absolutely. That's what we need to negotiate. That, that, I, I, I have yeah. to tell you, I'm not overly concerned with that negotiation. I think we can do that. Well, I mean, my only concern around it is, is you know, from our side, you know, where do we go to get that money, and how easily do we do that? And you know, if we're going, if this is, and, and and I think his Tyler's point is that this is not an override; it's a debt exclusion, right? It's a debt exclusion for, for the life of the project. It's two for us as well, and I would like to, as as a board, not have to go back to the well more than once to fund this thing. So. That although that 3.1 number is off in the distance, we're gonna. It, 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 it seems to me as though we're gonna end up having to go back in at some point and and get some additional funds. Jason, I don't know. Do you want to? The way this described it is basically a two phase two phase project, a two phase ask. This is how this was. This, how, how this one. Goes. But from Broughton's perspective, we have. We have an appropriation that was approved at the Springtown meeting of $16.4 million. 
that 16.4 is still on the table. We just need to make it subject to an overlap. The original proposal was to reduce to 12.8 million, but now because if the two boards approve this phase two, I would be recommending this board to leave it at 16 million, right? Because we won't spend the money, say, for something happens on a permanent phase two doesn't happen as quickly as we want it to happen, then that's something we would have to, we'd have to talk about. But the money is there and available and then we just have to work out how the ones will pay their share back to us because we already sorry, we already did the um, we already figured out how the 12.8 is going to be repaid by that 16 million. The numbers are right there on the screen. We just have to figure out how that 3 million gets back to us. And I, like I said, I think that we can sit down, Jason and I can sit down and try to figure something out. Yeah, I mean uh, that's that's my only concern is that um, that the ambiguity of that is going to cause people to say to us, you didn't understand your numbers going into the deal, but we, but we really did. We just haven't resolved that negotiation of that 3.1 to an actual number. Right now, it's just a budget, and, and, and we hope the budget's right, right? We think it is. Um, uh, I think there's a sufficient amount of uh, contingency in that $3 million to get us through the two years of permitting. We, you agree with that? We, yeah, we, that's what we try to do. We try to, we, we hope for the contingency to, to work out. Yeah, I mean, sooner rather than later on that, but I don't know if, if the timing of that is somehow going to cause us um, to, to have that number change around very much. I, I don't know. I haven't seen the numbers, but I guess... That would be the part of getting Brian Falk involved in <coughs> negotiating the final IMF. Yeah, with the yeah no, construction I, I, too. I hear you. Yeah. And then we have uh, we have a question on yeah. the water so, question. But, um, you sir, can you step up to the mic, please, or, or pass the mic back? Thanks. Um, just on the budgeting. So the Ron Dunstable there is 11.8. That's 2.26 per mile. There's only, between the pepperal thing, that adds up to the house of the mile. It's 3.1 versus 2.26. Um, there's... It also factors in the number of services. Sorry, it also factors factors in the number of water services on the connection, um, and you know hydrants and everything, and you know the connection between Route One Thirteen. So that there's it's it's not a, it's not an even base per every mile. You know, as you get to a more rural area, the cost will be less than if you get to a more dense urban area. But from looking at that that the smaller orange line, that's about as rural as any part of that whole map. Right? There's going to be less connections on that line right there than there will be on any of the blue. Um, there's that, actually quite a few. It's kind of hard to say. In the there are. are. I know, but I've been coming once you cross the line. Yeah, you know? but that, that million, that 3.1 million includes what's going on in Pepper. Right. So that just seems like that's $750,000 more for the same mileage. Like per mile price, you're, you're going with 750 Yeah, I'd have to look back at the numbers to see exactly what's going on. I'm just, we can I'm just, just dividing. <laughs> That's not right. I'm just, sorry. I'm just dividing. I, I suspect those it's the services. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I'm thinking. I just don't think that 3.1 might be on the high side. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yes, Allison. please, Allison. Um, so Mark, just to or Jason, um, either or both communities could go forward and request phase one and phase two funding together up front and get that permission and just hold the remainder. Well, no, because two, right no. now to get that first phase done, we only have one application for SRF funding before the state, and that's the Groton application. So it, we would have to either go back and amend it, ask for more, and, and that makes it a little bit dicey. So the best way to do this based on Tyler's recommendation is to leave the Groton's SRF funding in place and then on phase two, jump on Pepperell, jump on board with Pepperell for the for their application for the overall project. Did, did I explain that right? Yeah. If you apply through Pepperell for phase two, you get the benefit of the environmental justice community and the debt forgiveness. Um, so using Pepperell for phase two would be ideal. Um, in phase one, we filed that application in August, pre early because that's when the application phase for the next year concluded. 
So I wasn't talking, I don't, I, was, I didn't intend to be talking about the SRF funding so much as going to town meeting voters to get oh. our authorization. Oh. We could do that all up front. What I'm saying, one and two 16 initially. million, yeah, so yeah. leave, yeah, I'm sorry, Allison, That's I misunderstood what you're saying. Thank you. Leave the 16 million alone and mm -hmm. just tie it to a debt exclusion. And then that way, Groton and Dunstable have the available funds to do the whole project right, right now. Just have to work out how it gets paid back. I, I apologize for misunderstanding. Nope, that's the question. okay. Thank you. It's a good point. Well, that, yeah. uh, that, and that's good too, because uh, you just lit the lamp for me too. Now I understand <laughs> what you're talking about. But the, but the SRF piece yeah. is very important to the overall it, absolutely. how we pay it back and everything. Right. I think Becky. Had I pre. A um, yeah, I'm sorry, Becky. You. I wasn't. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you had your hand up. I apologize. No. <laughs> okay. Um, for just a minute. Uh, any anything else from board members at all? Okay. Ooh, one minute. How many times did the special group meet to get to this decision? We had two meetings as a group, and I fed everybody. I just want you to know that. What did you feed them? I brought pizza, <laughs> pizza, pizza gave them and water. Donuts. water. Yeah. No, no, no. We fed them up. And then one meeting, we had a, like an hour, hour, yeah, sure. twenty minute session with DEP. So we had a lot of conversations. And we would say this group feels satisfied with. Those meetings to get to this decision. From my perspective, yes. I wasn't a part of it, so I I'd have to ask sure Lee and Allison if they agree. I thought, and Jason, I thought it was a good meeting. Good I thought, meetings. you know, I may speak to that. I thought we came to a good conclusion. We had sort of both sides of the tracks were pretty much, um, you know, pretty solid in their positions coming into this. And um, I don't want to say this was solving a stalemate, but it may have been. <laughs> um, both sides obviously felt very strongly about the project before us. Dunstable's main concern is, is the money um, and the future houses that will potentially be impacted. And just to quickly reiterate, we felt that, that the, the Dunstable Pepper line was going to sort of tackle that. Um, and Groton felt that there's tackled it better as well. So, um, but we had to come out of there with something. And it's a good compromise. It was, it was a compromise. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to, you know, just mm -hmm. speaking uh, extemporaneously, I want to really, you know, commend, I think, the, the fact that the group was able to sit down. This is not anything that any of us, I think, uh, signed up for or had any background uh, in, in terms of dealing with, uh, you know, sort of a, a contamination or environmental crisis to the public water system and learning so much about it so quickly. Uh, in, in so many moving parts was, was certainly something that wasn't easy. So I think having a group come together to help focus and maybe define better what our options are was, was a good thing, and I commend that. I commend the, the work that they did. So we had some questions on Mr. T. Sorry, I just wanted to add to what Leah said. I, I think not only does this solution provide the benefits that, that Groton and Dunstable and Pepper were all kind of looking for, but it also gives us a path forward to continue, ideally without a consent order from DEP, and it, it keeps us on track with the current time frame. We don't have to, to contemplate any kind of ongoing disagreement that kicks things back to the district or, or delays things without any benefit to anyone. So. Yeah, actually a good point there is it, not putting back in the lap of the district. They, they have many other yeah. things to be worried about right now and having to deal with that is not something that uh, and, it, and it'll save the, was interested in. It'll <laughs> save the district going into future years about $155,000 a year, which goes from $155,000 down to about $60,000 right. a year. Right. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, yes, Connie. Rotten Herald. I have a couple of questions. Yep. I'm so I want to be very clear when I report this. Phase one is the blue line, is that correct? Yes. And phase one is a Groton Dunstable solution to get water to the high school. Correct. And surrounding properties. There. And the properties. Are there. Okay. Phase two is enabling Dunstable to hook in with capital to complete the loop, and that doesn't. It, it does. It does impact Broughton in terms of a, an emergency interconnection, and it does allow the, the the towns to probably get more state funding and more loan forgiveness by having the three towns go into the project together, which ultimately, hopefully, will save both uh, the, the, the taxpayers of Broughton and Dunstable. Uh, 
money by, by having this regional approach. So are you assuming then that the original cost estimates that we have for the rock and the house will only be reduced by the relationship with capital? I'm hoping that the future, the future cost <coughs> to both communities will go down by having it as a regional. Those first set of figures are set in stone. That's pretty much what we think. I, I don't think that's going to change too much, Jason. Right? That's probably what it's, going to, what it's going to be. But I think any future impacts to the system, because the main thing you have to keep in mind is if that plume moves, DEP is going to require the school district to tie them in. So by having this line come down and having the three towns work together on that, it will put us in a better position to address those, the potential in the future. So I, I would say that's probably another benefit. Well, the plume, however, is not in the Rotten's town borders. Is that correct? No, the plume is coming from the Rotten's High School, which is right. So that's the origination. Right. Thank you. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, uh, Becky. Yeah. And then. You know, so uh, I, uh, I wanted to just say that I, I think there's some real uh, benefits to having put this into two different phases because. The one unknown that uh, Mark just, well, there are many unknowns about PFAS and the future, let's put it that way. Um, but the big unknown is where that plume is going and how many other houses are going to get contaminated or find that they are contaminated by something that originated at the Groton Festival High School. Um, the Groton Solution puts Groton in the position to be able to address houses that are in Groton near the high school. Um, and then the phase two, putting that a little bit later gives us the time to know and deal with future homes in Dunstable that may become contaminated to know where they are and know how to figure out how to get water to them. So um, I do think that that's an advantage of this and I appreciate that the working group came up with this. Uh, Ed Robertson, Groton Fincom. Um, my question was on the 3.1 million. Uh, is that going to be shared by Groton, Dunstable, and Pepperell? By Groton, and Dunstable. Pepperell is putting up the 10.4 million. But the 10.4 was always there. Right. So, um, I mean, Pepperell to me, and, and I have to be careful what I say because last time, you know, I was accused of not being inclusive and communal and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but Pepple is, going to, is gaining significantly from this project. I mean, the, the first one in Pepple, they were gaining a lot. This one they're also going to gain, because I assume there's going to be a water flow somehow, otherwise with Dunstable and Pepple, because why would they do it? So it seems like the 3 1, which has got Pepple on one side, Dunstable on the other side, and the middle part, Groton, which has been paid for already, that Pepple would get part of the cost of this, because they're going to have a huge benefit. I, I mean, to have them not paid any of that money doesn't make sense to me. But, but, but Jason, let me, then you can respond. But the original Pepperell 10.4 million was to go a completely different route, right. and it would probably have picked them up more customers along that completely different route. So by Pepperell agreeing to come down to help us with future problems of that plume moving, Pepperell is doing a favor to Groton and Dunstable and the Groton and Dunstable Regional School District. That $3.1 million, while that's coming from Groton and Dunstable, there is a potential that it will be substantially less with loan forgiveness and um, uh, zero interest loans and things like that. Principal forgiveness and zero interest loans. So that is, Pepper does, Pepper loses a little bit by coming down here because they're not getting the, the same amount of rates they would have got if they had gone across the park. So the 10 4 is not going to happen? No, 10 4 is still going to happen. That's what's building the other it section. Just the other it's just way. coming the other way. That's the so, 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 I'm confused. The original Pepple one that was going to go the whole way. Just like the, no. this, the original Pepple line was going to come this way. Down 113. Okay. There's a lot more properties and a lot more for them to pick up along this route. They're willing to come down here to help us do this interconnection so that if there are, if this thing grows into Dunstable and that plume grows, we are better equipped to take to take that on. Okay. And then the three point one million dollars for this line is Dunstable and Garage contribution to address the, the potential in the future. So three point one million dollars. Okay. And there, there's no revenue that Purple's gonna receive out of all of this? Yeah, Not as much as they would the alternative. Okay. But it's 
Well, I was, yeah, I mean, I was thinking that in, I, I think we're, in, in the, the point of urgency is, is, I think, important, too, given the uh, fact that the DEP is still looking over our shoulder and going to be breathing down our neck very quickly. Um, can so I, I, I would like to Can um, I give it a try? Absolutely. So I move that, and I'm going to word this as a, you know, for, I think each board has to, to vote yeah, it, so but I'll just say... We are, uh, okay. I move that Groton and Dunstable uh, agree to form an inter-municipal agreement around legal fees and proceed directly with phase one of the PFAS solution. Regional, regional water, regional water <laughs> the regional water system plan to solve the PFAS problem and commit to working together on uh, negotiations required for phase two. Uh, do we have a second or? I'll, sec I'll second that. Okay, yeah, great. Um, great, Crotton Board, uh, all in favor? I, I, so I think we, there should be more discussion. Yeah, I think we need to have okay, some discussion. Right. I want to make sure that, that kind of the peer boards are comfortable with our motion. Right. And that it indicates to them enough support so, for phase two and that they're comfortable with us moving forward on that. All right, so why don't we um, if I could just add one, you, you, uh, go ahead. Part of the motion should be to leave the sixteen million dollar appropriation intact and not reduce it because that's your commitment towards the future, which should give some comfort to, to Dunstable that you're serious about moving forward with, with, with phase two. You put money on the table. So I think, I think, does that make sense to, to Dunstable? Yes. So I'd ask you to... Yes, I, I would add... Can you modify your... The, you consider modifying your... The clause in there, Cara. <laughs> Cara did it. You got it. <laughs> that uh, Groton will commit to keeping the $16 million authorization available. And tied to an override. And that tied is. to an override in the future. Debt exclusion. That makes sense. Debt exclusion. Debt, Debt exclusion, exclusion override in the sense. future. Jason? Okay. Yeah. And that's scheduled at this that, point uh, for you, the next you, you second that, Matt? I second that. All right. Yeah. All right. So we had, do we want some more discussion? Or uh, this might be a good point for Dunstable to, uh, to reflect on that and see if you want to uh, consider a motion at this point. I'm going to consider our town administrator writing the motion. <laughs> 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 Hang on, so just for, as a point of clarity, I think this vote is regarding the IMA for legal service, right? There's, there's, there's actually, yeah, there's actually two yeah, votes that, that I'm, I'm hoping this board already voted the IMA. I don't need them to re-vote the IMA. What they're doing tonight now is they're committing to the regional solution by leaving 16 million. What I would like, if it's with, with respect to, to your board, I would like you to vote the IMA and then I would also like you to vote the regional solution. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that okay with you, Jason? As long as it's okay with the board. Yeah. But, but we only have to vote the intermunicipal agreement. No. And no, I want you to support no, the regional both. approach, or because this board's going to put sixteen million on the table in three weeks. Right. And the IMA needs to focus on how we how we around what that uh, sure plan and is. It, and it's, I mean, it, in my view, in essence, if you're voting to allow me to enter into negotiations on the IMA, you're voting in support of the regional project. Because right. we're not going to negotiate unless we're all on board with mm -hmm. the project. Right. Yep. So I, you, the board, it's up to you on what you want to do. If you, if you vote to authorize me to negotiate, I take that as an endorsement of this project, and that's how I will negotiate with Mike. A couple of minutes ago, you may were going to make some comments do you remember what those were? <laughs> I would, yes, I, I, I do. I, time, actually, <laughs> I was going to say almost essentially identically what Mark okay. Mark said. I will say this just we for, have great minds. Yeah, I, he just he made the point for me. I will say just as, as another thing, 
I think if you talk to the town of Groton, if you talk to the town of Dunstable, if you talk to the town of Pepperell, no one is 100% satisfied with this approach. <laughs> and that's probably a good indication that we did, yeah. we made progress. Yeah. Because I don't love it, I don't think Mark loves it, and I'm guessing the town of Pepperell doesn't <laughs> love it either. It's, it does not do everything that we're hoping to get out of this project. All I can say is that probably means we've made some um, progress and made some steps forward. Um, and so, I, I, I agree know. with you 100%. In, in, in all honesty, I don't really think there is a perfect solution that everybody would love. But it's it's just, yeah. My thing is that it addresses what we actually started talking about. It's the, at the high school and those affected houses. All this yeah. other extraneous stuff came after for whatever agendas everybody has. I kept saying we needed to focus on the high school and the affected properties. And this I, solves I, that problem. Yeah, I know. I agree. Two motions. Yeah, one. All right. So I, I guess I have a motion in front of me, if that's okay. Um, I move to authorize the Dunstable, uh, authorize the town administrator of Dunstable to enter into negotiations with the town of Groton on an intermunicipal agreement uh, for shared services related to the PFAS, PFAS water project. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. And I'd like to call the vote from the motion that's uh, currently before the Groton Select Board. So, but the question is, should Dunstable also have a vote that says we're committing to the regional plan? I, I would like a second yeah. vote after you take your vote. I would like to hear a second vote. I understand what Jason's saying, but I just just so everybody knows, they're on board, you're on board, everybody's happy. And we'll have a kabuki dance later. Mr. Groton Board, uh, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Okay. Now I'd ask them to support, just say we support the regional approach, if, if, you, if you will. Yeah, I make a motion to acknowledge and support the Groton Water, regional, Groton regional, regional, water regional Water System Plan at approximately $16 million or so. Perfect. I'd like to amend that. All, that I don't know how to phrase that. I would like to amend that to say the Regional Water System Plan for Groton, Dunstable, and Pepperell. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> Do a second. Second. And there's a discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Two, three. What a wonderful journey. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you. Thank you. Possible, thank you. Thank you. Sounding eyes. And working on Thank you. We have been. Allison, thank you very much. Right. At this point, right. 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 there's a lot of community to get those votes. All right. Uh, <laughs> at this point, I'd like to uh, take a five minute uh, timeout. So we're going to take a five minute timeout. I declare a timeout. A recess, yes. I'll uh, make a motion to adjourn.